Welcome to Kramer Says. Kramer Says. Be part of the show at KramerSays.com. Interact on Twitter at Kramer S-E-Z. Now, Kramer Says. Welcome to the show. My name is Kramer. This is the Kramer Says Podcast. It is Monday, January 30th, and today's special guest is Patriot Mama. Now, you've probably seen her on Instagram and TikTok and the, and the like. Uh, what you may not know is that here soon, she's going to be heading out to Vegas to work with Freedom International during the Super Bowl festivities in Vegas. And what they do is they work directly with the the PD police, uh, I'm sorry, the Vegas police department there, and a task force. And what they do is they, well, they look to set, uh, to, to locate missing uh trafficked or runaway kids during that event. And last year they saved 42 kids. Now we're going to talk to her about that, but first bring her on board. First of all, welcome to the show, Patriot Mama. Hello. Thank you. Good to have you here. How are um, you? I'm doing great. Uh, but before we get started on what you're doing in Vegas here in the next few weeks, um, a lot of people have seen you and the work that you've done. And a lot of your videos, uh, are, are more in depth for for the people who don't know exactly who you are and what you've done over the last several years. Kind of introduce yourself and tell us how you got into uh, what you're doing and the journey that got you here. Well, it started about eight years ago. Um, I came across some, I guess, information about traffic children, and the more I started researching it, um, the more I got concerned. And all I kept saying is, why isn't anybody talking about this? And the more I dug, the worse it got. Um, and I'm talking mainstream media, all of it. Like nobody talks about this. Um, well, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard for these organizations to talk about it when their producers and, and some of the people working for these organizations are doing the exact very thing that that you're researching and digging into and working against. For example, the the, the producers that the several guys at CNN, for example. Yeah, everywhere you turn, I mean, CNN was infested with pedophiles. Um, you know, there's there's tons of politicians on both sides that that all have been caught doing what they're doing. You know? well, let's let's dive into that for a second, because I think that's interesting. Um, every time a pedophile gets busted, somebody wants to put blame one area or the other. They want to say, well, this group is to blame or this group is to blame. And um, I, I was guilty of that initially at first as well. But when you dig into it, is there any area or political ideology that is free from pedophilia? No. No, it's everywhere. It's both sides. Yeah. It's it's all sides. It's everywhere. It's in government. It's in Hollywood. It's in your backyard. It's in your schools. It's everywhere. Everywhere. So talk and about the happened. first time. Well, talk about the like the first effort that you took. So people, I think the people get disgusted when they talk about it. But in, in their mind, they go, well, I'm just one person. There's nothing that I can do. So you started out as one person. How did you start your journey? How did you get into it? What was the first action that you took? Um, I started bringing it to social media. And, and I'm not going to lie. It started with conspiracy theories. Um, you know, it, it really did. And But what I was seeing was a lot of people weren't believing what I was putting out there. They were pushing me away. They thought I was crazy. And I said, you know what? One day I just woke up and said, I need to figure out a way to wake more people up that are not aware or think that I'm crazy. So I decided to take it back to the ground level of what's actually going on in your backyard and started what I started doing was putting out gathering every week. I would gather just from quick searches online that mainstream media is not reporting, but there the reports are out there in these local news articles of all of these pedophiles that are being arrested or sentenced, charged, whatever. And on any given day, I can do a quick search and find at least 40 a day. So I started doing a weekly update with all of these headlines from all across the country, just in this country alone, where it would be about 70 to 80 headlines for a week. And that's just a quick search. So every week I was putting out these updates, like here's your weekly update of what the mainstream media is not reporting to you. Look how infested we are. So once I started doing that, I started seeing more people that might not have gone along with the conspiracy theories, but now are seeing, hey, that's my town. That's right down the road from me. Right. That's that's I know that school. My niece goes to that school. So that was what actually started turning more people into saying, oh, my gosh, we really do have a problem in this country. 
Um, so once I started getting people on board with that and waking them up with how bad it really, really is, and it's not just a conspiracy theory, that's when I started getting people to start sharing the information and wake more people up. And from there, I, you know, it snowballed. And then I started right. getting into what was going on in everybody's states as far as legislation. You know, like there's there's so many different parts of this that that I've been trying to educate everybody on and how to keep your kids safe, what goes on online, like what to look for, look the signs to look for in, in possibly somebody out on the street. You know, we we walk down the street and we don't think to look, but it's everywhere. And it well, that's it. it, it it's pervasive. Right. There, there, it's pervasive. It, 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 it amazes me that people just don't think that it's there as much as it is. And because it's not in their life, that it must not be, uh, it must not exist. If they don't see it in their own backyard, it must not exist. What are some of the signs, if, if people just to look around, driving through town, walking through town, at the mall or whatever, what are some of the signs that people should look for uh, to recognize the potential? for trafficking or missing children? Is there, are there, are there things that you can look for and see? Yeah. Some are... of the basic things is, you know, basically, you know, how they look, you know, if, if non-eye contact is a huge one, if they, they will make, if they seem like they're scripted in what they're saying, um, you know, especially if you go to like a motel or hotel, that is a huge hot spot for a lot of this. Um, you know, if, if you see like children or teenagers or young women, um, you know, in these hotel rooms, motel rooms, and you see a constant flow of men in and out, like that's another huge sign. Um, you know, for a long time, you know, these hotels and motels have been turning blind eye to it, you know, because they, you know, they don't say anything. They just, they're getting money for the room and they don't care. They don't want to get involved. However, um, there's been a lot of things that have changed along the way where now hotels and motels are being held accountable. And um, for these types of situations, and there are survivors that are now suing. I mean, there was just in August alone, there was a lawsuit. A survivor actually was paid twenty five million dollars from from the wow. hotel. Yeah, that so there, <laughs> and that's not the only one. There's been plenty. Right. So now, what's happening is, and I have a lot of this in my link tree, is that these hotels and motels are having to train every single employee on the signs of trafficking. Um, because they don't want to pay off right. these lawsuits. So this is like, a, you know, something in the fight against this to end this. And it's about time. You know, the credit card companies with, with the CSAM and stuff like that, they're being held accountable, accountable for what's been sold with their, you know, credit card platform. Why do you think that it, why do you think it's so hard to get people to wake up to this, that it's there? They don't want to think it's real. It's too much. And I get it. It's a lot. You know, I've seen a lot. I've heard a lot, you know, in the years that I've been doing this. And it's a lot to to think that things like this would be done, especially to children. Um, and there's been some. It, it, it's it's evil. How anybody well, in Indiana, would... I mean, to give you an example of how rampant it is, is that in Indiana, in the I think it's the last couple of days. Um I think it was a 64-year-old man and a 31-year-old woman uh, have now both been charged with the sexual molestation of a three-month-old. Three months old. Did you hear that's a baby. Girl? That's not a child. That's not a toddler. That's a that's a baby. And that's how sick old. these people are. Six-week-old also recently. Yep. Yeah. Six weeks old. Yep. Yeah. You so know, it, it, I, 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 so when you tell people these stories, um, What's the first response when you start to tell people the gritty, you know, the gritty truth? What's their first response? Are they? They don't want to believe it. They don't want to believe it's happening. They don't want to believe that this type of stuff is being done to children. Um, it's easier to turn a blind eye and pretend like it's not happening, but it's not. That's not helping. This that's not helping. You know, I'm sorry. It's uncomfortable. Trust me my life has forever changed because once you, you go this way, your life is forever changed from what you see, well, what you know, what you hear, what you read. Um, but these things are happening. And if we keep turning blind eyes to it and we don't get loud about it, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And that's why we are where we are on how bad it is. It is coming to light, but until we all get loud about this and do something about this, it's not going to go away. 
it's well, and you've got the, you've got the situation of Ghislaine Maxwell um, that just happened recently, where she goes to prison for trafficking, but none of the people that she trafficked for, we can't know who they are because it'd be too embarrassing, right? That's the mentality. It, it would just it would just make people, uh, you know, scared of their government and their political leaders because that's who can afford this. That's who's having kids trafficked. It's 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 not Joe, the guy that works, you know, at the diner and has a uh, what do you call it a um, uh, trailer down by the river. It, it's the it's the rich and elite that have kids trafficked, right? Um, so let me ask you this: when when you you crossed, the, there's a line that you crossed where uh, initially, for lack of a better term, you're just a soccer mom doing this conspiracy stuff out of the basement of your home. That's the mentality that people have. When you crossed that line and it broke into no, I'm going to do more than just um, think about it and talk about the conspiracy theories. I want to take action. What did that look like? What what actions did you take initially? How did you get involved at the level that you're at now, which has taken years? What were your first steps to get involved locally, though, more than just reporting the, the information? Well, for me, um, the group that I formed, Dark to Light, you know, there's five of us and we all have different jobs. You know, I work with a cyber team. I work with somebody that actually has connections in the political world. Um, you know, a big part of this is it to, to start conquering this is legislation. Um, so we have contacted numerous different politicians that do fight this, that have had bills passed. Um, that is because there weren't many. And and to be God's honest, you know, after speaking to a lot of them, they just didn't know this was going on because it wasn't, you know, out in the open. So now that that this is coming to the forefront and it is being spoken about more and they are realizing how bad it is. Yes, there are a lot of politicians on both ends. And we've I've spoken to politicians on both ends that want to end this. Um, you know, the harsher sentencing, it, 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 it has to get done because, and I keep making the same, there's two, two parts in this that are so lacking. One is the harsher sentencing, which really needs to be tackled. And I am seeing a lot of good things in certain States that have been passed recently or loopholes that have been amended or are getting tackled, um, because they're getting slaps on the wrist, like nothing. But meanwhile, you have a victim that's going to have a life of trauma from what has been done to them. And I know that because I speak to many survivors. Um, but the other end of this is also the aftercare part. We, we are so lacking in after, aftercare for, and what's even crazier that I've been reporting about, and I have been, is that a lot of these victims that were forced to be in this world, teenagers no less, that were forced to commit the crimes of prostitution, of right. being trafficked, that have been forced on drugs, addicted to drugs, when they're rescued, they're actually being thrown in jail for the crimes that they were forced to commit, or they're not given the proper aftercare. So what happens? So now we have the offenders that get the slap on the wrist, they're getting put back out on the streets to reoffend again. And then we have the victims who aren't being treated properly, either being put in jail, and they're not given the proper aftercare. And we have a constant recycle on both ends. Both ends. Right. So if we are not tackling these two parts of it, it's never going to go away. Never. Well, let's talk about the let's talk about the sentencing. Um, here recently, what we've seen California do in particular is move away from harsher sentencing and actually lightening uh, and allowing a ten year gap in between um, somebody who wants to have sex with a younger person. Yeah. <laughs> My understanding is is that uh, a twenty one year old could legally have sex with an eleven year old in the state of California with this bill that they have. Um, and I don't know if they passed it. I know it was going through, but I don't know if it got passed. Yeah, I'm not Can you sure. speak to that? Okay. I, I did see all about that. Um, California, my God. <laughs> well, let's talk um, about sentencing that you want. Um, what, what do you What do you think is fair? For me? Mm -hmm. So there's different levels of the crimes. There are different levels uh, of the crimes. Um, you know, there's the CSAM, which is, and that's another thing. Like, there, there's a lot of... of of movement going on where they're trying to actually, um, and I forgot what state it was that actually changed the, the terminology. They don't want to call it, we, we don't want to call it pornography anymore. It's child, we'll call it what it is. It's child sexual abuse material. It is not pornography. Right. It is not for entertainment. No, it right. is child, it's CSAM. Um, so first the terminology really truly has to be changed. Um, but there's a lot of levels. I mean, you know, you got the people who were just buying it. You got the people who are selling it. You have the people who are making it. You have the people that are actually committing offenses against children. 
You have the ones that are actually trafficking children. So there's all different levels. For me, you touch a child, I want a life sentence. I want a life sentence. A lot of people are saying death penalty, and I know DeSantis has just, it's come out of his mouth recently. Yes, I would love that too. Am I expecting all 50 states to jump on board and say, yeah, like death sentence right away? No, I know it's not going to happen. I know, you know, I'm in the real world, I know. But, you know, this 18 months, it, it just right. it doesn't fly for me. Right. You, it doesn't well, fly. It's, you know, a, a desire is like uh, is like a thirst or like a hunger. Uh, you, you can't ever fully quench it. And so if you say, well, well, I went through rehab, I'm fine now. I, I just don't, I don't agree with that because I, I, I've gone on diets before and it's tough when you have that desire. And I can't imagine having a desire that says harming ch children. I, I, that, that that's the desire. I, I can't imagine that that's, but I don't see how you, how you squash that. I don't see how you stop that w with that being the case. I, my, my personal opinion is, is right in line with yours is that, um, if you deal in it, life sentence, if you did it, meaning you actually physically harmed the child, death sentence, sorry, you cannot be cured. That's just the way I look at it. There's Would you agree? Tons of, 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 or, you know, uh, cases where I have seen that, you know, they have been registered sex offenders and then 20 years later they commit again. So, you, you know, whether it's one year, three months after they're let out or 20 years after they're, they're committing again. Right. They are committing again, and that's because they were caught. So God only knows how many in between there were that haven't been reported. And for states that are for states that are contemplating this and looking at sex crimes against children to to be harsher, uh, because they do carry that atrocity with them their entire lives, uh, the offender should as well. They should pay for it with the rest of their lives. With that with that being said, um, what do you think about these other states, California in particular, that have become sanctuary states for all kinds of things? If, if Florida, Texas, Indiana, Ohio were to clamp down on um, child pornography, uh, uh, child images of harm, so on, do you think that that would create a sanctuary type situation for these other states? Do you think that they would go in the opposite direction? Do you see that that being a possibility? You know, I don't know. I, I would hope not, because honestly... You know, I see a lot of, of, of states like California trying to normalize this, trying to normalize, you know, uh, pedophilia, you know, trying to rename it, calling it minor attractive persons, trying to, you know, this whole thing where, all right, I, I may be attracted to, to minors, but I would never touch them. How do I know that? You know, I, it, it, there, there, there's a line in the sand with this. It's, there's no. Oh, well, here's one thing. Like, instant, like California. You know, like you said, this law that they're trying to pass where it's like 10 years, uh, where it would make like a, okay to have sex with like an 11 year old or a 14 year old. No, you know, I just, it, it drives me crazy that anybody would try to normalize that. But this whole thing of trying to normalize has been going on for a long time. Well, that's one of the things I had on, on social media about a year ago. Uh, I, I put out a um, a video that said that, are you aware that every year, uh, somewhere in the ballparks of 800,000 kids disappear every year? And I was amazed by the number of comments, especially from intelligent people. In fact, if you know the, uh, the TikTok influencer, Mother Runner, she's running for office right now. Her comment back to me was, yeah, but 400,000 of them are found. They come back, they run away from home, they come back. Okay, okay, that, that that's, so you're okay with 400,000 never returning. That, that's my mindset is that I, I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that since you're a conservative, lean conservative, and you come out against this, how much pushback do you get from people on the left saying that what you're doing is wrong and they're advocating for the opposite? Do you get any of that? Because that's kind of the pushback I got. When I started mentioning this, because of who we are, we get pushback on our stats or whatever we're saying. And I think they missed the point. Do you get, are you getting I any did, of those kind of reactions? I did in the beginning, I did get a lot of pushback in the beginning. I had a lot of people coming after me. Um, but once I started getting vocal that I was calling out Republicans as well, and I did a huge yeah. piece about Republicans and I even put up a documentary in my link tree to show it's not, you know, and right. I, and I started saying on my lives, like, I'm so sick and tired of people saying it's the left. It's the left. Yep. It's the left. No. Nope. No. Nope. It's both. I'm here to yep. tell you it's both. And I am exposing the heck out of the Republicans as well. 
it doesn't matter what color you are, what sex you are. I don't care what who you voted for. You touch a child, you're a piece of shit. Well, did you see the uh, what's his name? The guy uh, who used to do uh, to catch a predator, the TV show. Oh, um, is it John? Um, I can't remember what his name is, but uh, it'll come to me here in just a moment. But he had a, a TikTok video up here recently where he's saying that, you know, he's got years in media. He, he, he should be it should be pretty easy to certify him. Right. To validate who he is. Uh, and the work that he's done has been very clear on who he's gone after. And what I find interesting is that TikTok will not validate him. It says that he doesn't meet their criteria. When he asks what the criteria is, they can't give it to him. So again, looking at TikTok as a platform, um, we've seen what they've done there. Uh, explain to the audience the, the types of, of things that you've witnessed on TikTok that showcases that the platform it, itself may be used, used as a trafficking platform. Okay, so working with the cyber team, we do get a lot of cases um, as far as, you know, accounts that possibly, and we have found um, that once you go into these accounts and you go into the followers, you, it, you sometimes find the big fish. And we have found the big fish. We have, a, to date, IP Conflict, the group that I work with, they have to date 27 arrests under their belt from, from this type of stuff. Um, is, that, is that from the reverse where they go after them and they pretend to be a young person? How do they do that? Well, lately, what we're seeing is that there is a lot of like young kids thinking that this is a joke. So it's become a little harder um, before this became like a real public thing that, you know, a lot of people like us are going after them online. Um, it was a little easier and they were real. So it's kind of like weeding through the fake ones. We did find right. a group of teenagers that did this as a joke, unfortunately, and had everybody in hysteria all over TikTok. And we were like, listen, it's teenagers. It's a joke. Like, this is what sucks, is that we have to deal with this type of crap now because it's gotten out there. And this is why we kind of really like to work in the shadows and we don't like to let them see us coming. Because once we start making all these videos about these accounts, what we have seen is that the real ones go private. Right. They they ghost. They, right. you know, we have been linked back to like Discord channels and 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 whatever kind of groups that they they run where they actually do sell the material. And they'll ghost and they'll change like admins and it becomes so hard. Well, that's so, what that's what I my understanding is that one of the paths is, is that they'll they'll showcase a video or uh, content of young women in particular that are underage, very scantily clad, nothing that's illegal, um, but they'll lead you to a link. That Lee, and, and then that's a link. It's a, it's a, it's a okay. link farm, right? I mean, just okay. keep staggering until you get okay. to, to, to content that you, well, if you're a pedophile that you actually want to see. And so is that the process that you see is that it's, it's almost like um, in marketing, we call it, um, um, it's a funnel, right? It's, it's a levels like, of engagement. Yeah. We keep it's engaging like you in more bait. and more. They put the bait in there in like right. the TikTok accounts, there's the links. And then, you know, you got to follow the trail, follow the breadcrumbs to get to the main source. <laughs> Um, which I don't personally do, the team does, but I've seen, I mean, we, we have even set up some sting operations where some cases have uh, come to us that their, their children, like nine-year-olds are being spoken to and got sexually explicit material sent to them. So we have set up sting operations as well. Um, and, and let me tell you, uh, huh, the conversations that these grown ass men were having what they thought was a 10 year old. If I could jump through the phone, I would, um, my God, but you know, it's, it's, it's disturbing, very disturbing. Well, another tactic that we're hearing about is, um, and parents should probably be made aware of this. Talk about the, the fact of how these men will also may never, ever touch the child or make contact with the child, um, but will communicate with them over social media and have the child send them nude photos or... And then um, they threaten them. And then they threaten them and, and so on. So walk, talk through that, how that happens and what parents should be looking out for. So basically what they do is, first of all, you should have, I'm going to tell you right now, if you can have your kids not on social media whatsoever, by all means, please don't. Um, but if, you, if they are on social media or are online, I highly, highly recommend a parental control app. Um, especially, you know, if they're underage, I know they're like, oh, the privacy thing with teenagers. Listen, you should be educating your children anyway. 
especially a teenager at that point, you should absolutely be educating them and putting the fear in them of what's actually really going on. I have with my children, they're 11 and 13. They know everything. I'm very honest with them um, because my daughter was targeted. Um, But you absolutely should have, especially with a minor, a parental control app. The, the top recommended app that I will say that I had gotten from the founder of the organization that I support is Bark. Bark is probably the top app that I would recommend. But at any point, any parental control is better than nothing. And you're saying Bark, like B-A-R-K? Yes. Okay. They also, Bark also came out with a phone. Um, so you can monitor everything with your child's online and, and social media, everything. Um, they are the, the talk recommended by the organization. Um, and I do trust them. They actually, which we'll get into after they had trafficking happen. Now imagine being the founder of an organization doing this for over 10 years, being a Navy chief, um, and having your own child trafficked under your roof. Wow. And is it possible, is it possible that, um, we always hear about, you know, kids that are running that have run away and that they're separated from their parents or they're they're out of the home. What is the likelihood that a child is being trafficked and still living at home? Is that is that happening as well? Yep. A lot. What's really? happening is, is that, you know, they these groomers online, what they like to do is they will target your child online. Um, they will especially target children that come from broken homes or not getting the attention that they deserve or want at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and they will groom them and make them feel wanted and special and lure them out and they'll lure them out. And, and just, you know, for an example, like, and promise them the world, um, will wind up getting them hooked on drugs or whatever and winds up trafficking them. And the child will be coming home. The teenager will be coming home every single night wow. and you wouldn't even know it. And that's exactly what happened to the founder. And is this kind of like, the, is this crime and what's happening below the, the surface, is it kind of like what we're experiencing now with the uh, the COVID issue with with VAERS? Is that we're, the, the, the situation is substantially worse than we think because the reporting is so low? I have spoken to two different organizations. Um, I have even spoken to the founder of Pegasus Ops, which is out of London. Um, He has been doing this for years. He's going to be bringing his organization to America soon, within the next year. Um, It is so much worse than than the... What's being reported right now, the last I heard, is that it's become a $250 billion a year business. Yeah. Yeah, And that's just trafficking. Right. That's not just a whole of predators. That's just trafficking. And that is that is for some countries that is their entire budget for the entire year, and we're just talking about trafficking kids. It's a huge business, and that's why Ghislaine Maxwell's little black book is so secret, is because of who was in the black book, who who it's going to embarrass. Um, let's get to uh, the event that you're you're going to be working with uh, in Vegas, uh, Freedom International. Uh, talk about the group, what they've been doing, why they're doing it. And then let's get into some of the numbers. If you've got those available, some of the numbers of what they've done in the past and why it's so important, the mission that they have, why it's so important uh, for, for others to be involved and the fact that they will be taking volunteers. Talk about all of that. Okay. So free international actually runs it. Um, There are other NGOs that actually 501c3s that are part of this. The one that I support is change on chain. They're based out of uh, Alabama. Um, So, and I'll explain about what they are after, but so they come together, they do this every year. I believe this is the eighth year that they're actually doing it and they do it in different locations across the country. Um, so this one is their biggest one because Super Bowl week is, is one of the biggest, if not the biggest week of trafficking because of what's going on. Um, so they come together. They work in tangent with. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Let, let me let me step back a bit because I think it's important for people to understand when we say when we say trafficked. For those of you who don't know exactly what that means, maybe we should explain this. I'm sorry to to, to do this in the middle of this, but trafficked is more than just than just child porn and somebody being grabbed up off the street and being forced into this into uh, into the sex trade. 
talk about what you're talking about in Vegas for trafficking. You're talking about people having sex with visitors to Vegas that are actually slaves to somebody else. It's modern day slavery. So basically what they have is they have a lot of, you know, this is where the, the runaway teens, all of this, they get caught up or homeless teens or whatever it is, how they, they, they get them. And, and why do they pick on them? <laughs> because they're easy targets. Um, so they get them hooked on the drugs and everything like that, but then they, they will, they will enslave them into this and basically prostitute them out. There, there are pimps that are advertising heavily, especially during Super Bowl week for these victims to be bought and sold for services. Um, and you know, trafficking is not just like you said, it's not just coming across the border. It's not just, you know, trafficking uh, an individual, you know, from one country to another, it is basically selling them out for prostitution. Um, so that's what happens heavily in Vegas on a day to day basis, especially during the Super Bowl week. So, so they will work, uh, hands in hands with the Vegas police department and get the cases so they have been doing this for the past couple of months working here you know uh, getting the intel working on the surveillance getting all the information that they need creating these booklets of they have this year they have 62 cases um so far is what i've been told um and the they're all teenagers they they made booklets of all of their information so us as volunteers are going to come in um we are going to meet up we will and set out in groups to canvas the streets, basically going around with these booklets, with these, you know, their faces, their pictures, their information, asking questions of people on the street, vendors, wherever, whatever it is. Um, last year, they had 65 cases. They did rescue 42 off the streets. Uh, 42 were found and saved. Um, and Let me ask you this. The 62 names, you said there were 65 last year, you're 62 this year. So, so these are people or kids that are, known to be in the system or be in the Vegas area? How, how do they get those, the, these kids' names and images and so on to, to create the book? I don't, I wasn't given that information. Okay. Um, it is basically that we are taking over the Vegas missing persons, all of their cases. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So um, they are basically handing everything over to us to change and change to call to rescue to free international. They have, um, Basically, these I, I sent you the news article, the news video of how they set up. Um, yeah, and we're just going to go out and start canvassing. And and I was told that yes, I more than likely will be coming in contact with actual victims rescuing these teenagers off the streets. So they're when you making, see you're canvassing, walk through that process. What does that look like? You go out during the day. Go. It's during they're the doing night. day shifts. There's two shifts. There's like a morning shift for three or four hours, and then there's an afternoon shift. I don't know if they're doing any night shifts. I guess I'll find out when I get there because um, there is an orientation and everything when we get there. Um, but, you know, we there's a um, a fireman volunteer center, police and fireman volunteer center uh, that we will be meeting at. And that's where we'll get briefed. That's where we'll get all the, the booklets and everything. And they'll I guess they'll put us in teams. Apparently, I think we get like, you know, T-shirts so that everybody knows who we are on the streets. Um, but there's going to be probably chances that, you know, we're going to come in contact with some of these victims that their pimps are with them and it's going to take law enforcement to come, you know, come get them. It's not going to be like just finding some random teenager, just, you know, right, on the right. street. there's going to be chance, a lot of chances that they're not just runaways and that they are trafficked victims. So we are going to probably most likely come in contact with, with their handlers, um, which is going to take. Does that time. scare you a little bit? <laughs> it, it would me if, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna take somebody's you know livelihood away from them and walk away and leave them you know penniless for the for the most part i would you expect know, that you're gonna have they're not gonna be look at you very kindly no so when you go into the people the, the people that you're asking how do they treat you are, are you the enemy coming in are you the outsider coming in or is it something what you when you explain what you're doing that they're open to it from what I've seen, yes, the people, you know, that will be coming in contact and asking if they have seen anybody on the list. Um, from what I've seen and heard, yes, they are very open to helping because they and a lot of them say that it is a huge problem. It's a huge problem over there. Um, it, it, 
so during that week, like I said, it it more of them do come in. More of it actually happens. There are ads on like back page. It's kind of like the dark web for Craigslist kind of thing. And I've seen right. what these ads look like. Um and it they're pretty nasty. Um, well, give us give us an example. We're not rated here. We can say whatever we want. So what what would be a typical ad if you saw it? What would you I have what, one. Okay, well read one off. Read it off. Read it. Hang on, let me pull yeah. it up. Uh a lot of emojis, that I'll tell you. <laughs> A lot, a lot of eggplants and peaches, that kind of yeah. stuff. Guaranteed, a lot of emojis. Guaranteed, highly addictive with the pill emoji and 100% real pictures. Safe and discreet. Jaw-dropping skills. Stunning face to match my perfect body. Let me spoil you. My skills are absolutely unmatched. No bear services. No anal. Two girls special included. Call only messaging does not work. Wow. I, and, I mean... So, so that makes it pretty clear as to what it is. There's no, it's just vague enough, but clear enough at the same time. And that's so how they find a lot of these, these, these teens that are actually are being sold through these, through, through these ads. Well, let me ask you this. You, you put a lot of time and effort into this. What, what do you get out of it? What, what What's your takeaway? As a mom, If this was ever my child, my God, um, you know, I look at my kids every day and I, I, they're lucky, you know, they're lucky that they're safe, but there's kids out there that don't have that. It's a shame. Yeah. It is. I, I worked with an organization in Indianapolis called um, um, Outreach Indiana. Uh, and what they worked with was they worked with uh, primarily 13, 14, 15, 16 year old kids who uh, were either runaways, lived in the, lived on the streets uh, or and, and this was even, I think, sadder to a, to a large extent, is that they had families, they had a home, but they didn't have parents, meaning that there was no one there that was guiding them. Right. The parents were drug addicts, alcoholics, um, whatever. Uh, and the kids were basically feral uh, running the streets. And there was no guidance. And the only guidance they got was from either teachers who happened to see what was going on, notice what was going on, or this uh, group Outreach Indiana, which is a great, great organization for what they do. Um, but again, I, I think it's one of the the things that people just don't realize. Now, the reason I got involved with outreach is because I was I was homeless. I lived on the streets for a bit. Uh, lived in my I was lucky. I had a car. <laughs> you know, I, I I had a car. I had at least some place that was mine. Um, but uh, that that's why I got involved with them. So, do you think that when I asked you earlier, I knew why I I know why they go after these kids, right? They they're easy targets. The reason they're easy targets is because they need to be fed. They need to be housed. They need to be clothed. And that's a large part of it, right? And and the cheapest way to do that is to get them addicted to drugs and then just give them the basics and then pimp them out. What's the outcome? You, you pull these kids off of the street. How many of them have you kept in contact with or, or stories that you have where they've gotten back home and gotten their lives turned around? Let's talk about that. I have seen um, a lot. I have seen a lot um, because they were given the proper aftercare. But I've also seen a lot that did not get the proper aftercare and were thrown in detention centers instead of being because there aren't enough beds in across this country. Um, and that's why I'm pushing so hard for Change on Chains and other places uh, to, to really start getting these aftercare centers created. Um, okay, well, let's talk about that. What is what does so for other people? And this is how people get involved. So this yeah. is why I'm getting I'm digging into it. Um, you may not be. Um, the brave person that that Patriot Mama is here, willing to go into the darkest crevices of society to to look for these kids, but you can work in other areas. For example, legislating in your state for one of these one of these aftercare centers. Talk about what that is. What exactly would you look at in that area of, of what these these victims need? So, like Georgia just passed something. They got government funding, uh, a three year contract, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, I believe it was uh, 20 beds, you know, in Savannah, um, which is amazing. 
you know, that's something that you could actually start pushing or finding out if your state and your area actually has any types of these beds or, or I mean, these, these centers where they're actually giving aftercare. Um, because they do need the, you know, if they are hooked on drugs, they need that. They need the therapy. They need the proper care. Because what's happening is, is that once they're rescued, we're like, oh, great, they're rescued. We see a headline. All these kids were rescued. Yeah, but then what? Are, are they doing anything for these kids? Are they just throwing them back on the street? And then they wind up back in the trafficking world. They're going right back because they have nowhere else to go. Or they're so right. traumatized, they weren't treated properly. So, you know, like these organizations also, like if you have an organization, it, like Change on Chains is one of them. Um, they're new. They're only a year old. But what they're doing is they're building a tiny home village. Um, they have the search and rescue. But they're also building a tiny home village where they're breaking ground on the third tiny home. So, you know, a lot of these places can't function without donations, which is why it's so important to support these organizations and make sure you do your research. Always do your research on an organization before you support it. Yep. And make sure because everything is public. It should be transparent. And that's why I love Change on Change because they are so transparent. I have seen where every single one of my dollars has gone. And we've donated over $5,000 to them. Um, but they are giving the proper aftercare they are taking them to their appointments and you know one of them stayed there i believe for six months you know she had a brand new newborn due to the trafficking world and she got the proper aftercare and she's living a normal life now um i'm sure she'll never the trauma will never leave her however she's definitely in a better place than she was um and that's why it's so important like you know to check with your you know what's going on in your states do they have any type of even volunteer programs i know somebody that actually there's a a survivor um center that he is now volunteering at and he is coming face to face with victims and hearing their stories you know you can volunteer at a center if you want to but definitely check to see what's going on and if if there is nothing in your area in your state contact your reps that's what they're there for. Right, Email right, them, right. call them, find out what they're doing. Use the Georgia Savannah location that just got government funding for almost a million dollars. Every state should have these. Every state. And and if they don't have enough beds, what's happening is that they're putting them in detention centers because yep. they didn't have enough beds. Well, they're treating they're treating the victim they're as a criminal because they right. have no other option. There's no nothing else to do. There's no centers. There's no um, well, there's there's no option. No, there is none. And and it's getting worse and worse and there's nowhere to put them. And that's why it's a constant recycle is because there's not enough aftercare and we need it. You know, all this money keeps going to Ukraine. All this <laughs> money keeps going to Ukraine. And, and I'm sitting here like, <laughs> what what about, you know, our vets? What about the victims? Like, yep. what are we doing to help our own? What are we doing to stop the problem? So we got to start pushing our representatives to get on get on this and do something about it. Well, get and, and you're, you're right. You're right. Cause the, the, the victims it, here, here's the dichotomy of what we have here. Um, the, the, the oppressors, right. The, 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 um, these evil people, well, they're not going to come out and say there's a problem. No. They're, they're not going to make it visual. And in many cases, the, the victims are ashamed or are shamed both um, by what happened and they don't have an option and they don't have a voice. The only voice that they have, the victim has, is people like yourself and, and others that are that are doing this. Um, give us the dates of the event in Vegas. I know that it's over Super Bowl weekend, but give the people the dates and talk to them about how they can get involved locally. Uh, if you live in the Vegas area, Clark County, et cetera, what can they do to be a okay. part of this? So to be a part of this, there is a website. It's called thebigsearch.vegas. There is a whole um, application to volunteer. You can volunteer through that. Um, I believe they email you. Um, there are other locations that they do this, and they did one in Pensacola, November 14th to the 18th. Those are the smaller ones. Like there was, I believe, 12 children that they were got the cases on. They round up rescuing, excuse me, seven. Um, there's going to be one, I believe, in Orlando. Um, but if you follow Free International Instagram page, um, they will always put the updates of when these searches that you can actually volunteer for, and they will put the information out there as far as the website to apply. Um, um, when I go there, I'm also, because I, I work 
I, I fully support and I do have a, a relationship with the founder, the two founders of Change on Change. Um, I did get cleared by the big, big bosses uh, to go in and spend half a day into the task force home um, to see how actually everything goes down, all the surveillance, everything on how these searches happen, how they, they gather the intel, all of it. So I'm going to have a peek on the inside for half a day, which I'm very excited about, which will help me bring more education to my supporters that, that are interested in what actually goes on. And I'll have the answers when questions are asked um, instead of me constantly going to the founder and asking questions. But um, to get a peek on the inside is going to be huge, too. I mean, the whole trip is going to be uh, surreal because, you know, doing this for this many years behind a screen and spreading the awareness to, you know, raising money and actually seeing where the money has been going, part of, you know, them buying surveillance equipment or clothing a newborn baby and, you know, paying for her doctor's appointments and stuff like that, to be able to actually be boots on the ground um, and get an inside look of how this stuff happens um, is 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 going to open a whole other thing for this. Now, now, one of the ways that you actually raise money for the, the operations that you're doing is through the sale of merch and otherwise. Talk about that and where people can find it. How can they help you out? Okay. Well, the first way I always recommend is go directly to, you know, Change and Change and donate to them. Absolutely donate directly to them. Um, they are breaking ground on the third tiny home and looking to break ground on the fourth as well. Um, they have a waiting list of, of victims um, to, to come stay there already. Um, but another way is they, they also have merch on their website. Another way is we started before they had the merch shop. I also came up with, um, a merch shop where it's all like sarcastic pedophile hunter themed <laughs> merchandise. Um, and it's quite sarcastic. So if you have a sense of humor and are kind of, you know, uh, going after pedophiles the way we do, you'll enjoy the merch, but, um, and the money that I you think, raise the, the profits that you make off of that, explain how that goes. Cause I think that's important for people to yeah. understand that you're, you're doing this to actually help out. So talk about the $5,000 that you most recently donated from your profits. So uh, we started this, I believe in June or July. Um, and a hundred percent of the profit with proof receipts, everything is goes to them. So, um, so throughout the course of the X amount of months we've donated, we were able to raise through the merch over $5,000. And uh, the last donation we made was about $700. And it went directly and they announced it on the podcast, which I put the clip on my page. I was blown away. I was surprised. It was a surprise. And they were able to buy a couple of pieces of surveillance equipment with that money. And it went, they used that equipment for their search November 14th to the 18th, where they did rescue seven. And now that equipment will also be used for future searches as well, which was amazing. So you know, not only can you donate to them, buy their merch or come to me and, and buy my merch, you're going to get something sarcastic that, I mean, people are walking around with shirts that say, um, my favorite animal to hunt, pedophiles. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was very sarcastic. I have a, a dark sense of humor. Um, you know, so. And what's your webpage? Where can people find your, your material? It is up in my link tree. Hmm. Okay. And where uh, can people on, find that? So, so besides TikTok uh, and Instagram, Instagram, are you anywhere else? Yes. I am on Twitter to a Patriot 74. I believe my link tree is up there too, but in my link tree, not only is there a ton of information, the link to the actual organization, my podcast links are in there, but the merch shop is in there as well. Um, yeah. And I actually have new designs that are coming out. Perfect. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, you know, I, I, I have, um, I have admonished people. Uh, over over the last two to three years uh, for selling merch. And, and the reason I've done that, and you and I have had that conversation, yeah. is that so many of the people utilize the funds to actually live on. Um, that's how they pay their mortgage. And when I run across people that are taking those profits and turning them back around and giving them right back to the cause that they're behind, it gives me faith that they're actually people that do things and say things because they want change to happen and not just because they need the mortgage paid. Uh, and, I, and I applaud you for what you're doing. Uh, it, it takes a it takes a a big heart, number one, and a lot of fucking time. It's a lot of time, isn't it? Yeah, I have. Although I, let me tell you, I sit here giggling. Well, I'm I just I make all the designs myself. I use a company that actually prints everything for me. So all I do is the designs. But that's my background. I I was a designer in in fashion. So, um, but when I'm sitting here sometimes with a bottle of wine, and I'm just <laughs> some of the designs are just that come out. I'm like, oof, oof, don't wear this one to church. 
Well, that, that's some people go. How how do you put out so much content? You know, how many? How, how do you put out so many videos in one day? Well, in two hours. How many? How, how do you do that so fast? And I usually say, well, it's a mean sense of humor. Generally, a little bit of alcohol involved, and I've watched or seen something in the news that's pissed me off and made yep. me think. So that's what mine is. Uh, Patriot Mama, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything you want to say before we wrap up here? Anything? Send anybody anywhere? One last thing. I just want everybody to get loud. I know it's uncomfortable, but you know what? Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable because these kids don't deserve this. And without us, it's not going to end. Yep. I agree 100%. 100%. Patriot Mama, thanks for joining us today. It is Monday, January 30th. We will be back tomorrow or as soon as we can. Thanks so much. More at KramerSays.com. KramerSez.com.